Hello to everybody in Facebook and podcast land. We want to welcome you to Mike Springston FFC podcast, and we want to welcome our, our, our viewership from Facebook. Today we're going back into the book of Ephesians and beginning with Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. We want to welcome our uh, people from around the United States who listen to us on Facebook and podcast. We want you to contact us at springston56 at gmail.com, mikespringstonministries.com, ffcma.org, or through Family Fellowship Chapel's direct messaging. You know, we thank God for all that God is doing because Jesus Christ is Lord and we surrender to Him and make Him Lord over every circumstance and every situation. So with that today, we're going to break the bread of life for you and we want you to enjoy the Word of God as we teach it. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. Open our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our heart that we can understand what the Word of God says to us. And then may we apply it to our lives so that we can be changed into the image of your dear Son. We give you glory and honor and praise for all of it and ask that Jesus would speak to us through the Holy Spirit and that as He speaks, as He speaks, we'll hear it and receive it so we'll know what to know, do, understand, and demonstrate and release to your people. And as we release it, We'll all receive it and be corrected by your word. Bless us now, I pray, in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, our Lord, and our man in the Godhead. And we'll give you praise and honor and glory for all of it in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Uh, Ephesians 5.16 begins like this, redeeming the time because the days are evil. My friend, in this day that we live, you have to take advantage of every moment. Because as Paul has said, the days are evil. Here's the thing about what Paul is saying here. Evidently, the days in Paul's day were no less evil than where we are today. And if we're not careful, those evil times and evil days will draw you into doing evil and being a part of evil unless you become very wise. So what do you have to do as Christians? You have to take advantage of every opportunity to grow in the Word, grow in prayer, and grow in the knowledge of Christ. You have to take the opportunity to communicate. You have to take the opportunity to be trainable and teachable. You have to be light in this world. You have to seek for light. You have to look for light. You have to expect light, and you never go into darkness that way. You bring no negativity to the Word of God or the saving grace of Jesus Christ or the church. You live in view of the uh, perception of those who are watching. You live without willful disrespect to the Word of God or the house of God. You take every opportunity to win the lost and share your faith. You do that by taking uh, away any possibility of unwarranted risks that can be seen as giving the perspective of sin uh, you be aware and be smart in dealing with people as the situation can be used for evil purposes. Even circumstances and situations that are not meant that way can be twisted to say that if we're not careful. Do not expect that in this day of evil that everyone is out for your welfare. Take advantage of the Holy Spirit and learn of Christ. The devil, like a roaring lion, awaits the moment when your defenses drop. So do not allow or give place to any breach in your armor. And we're going to go into that armor whenever we get to Ephesians 6. Verse 17, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of of the Lord is. Now, before I go into this any further, I want you to understand we're talking about the will of the Lord. That is something that we need to recognize. I preached this for a year, and I think some have been um, possibly put off by the fact that I've taught on the six phases of salvation, and that's okay. 
um, because I, I want to make certain that you understand where you are in Christ. And I want to make certain that you understand what Colossians chapter 3 is trying to tell us. But in this statement, Paul is saying what the will of the Lord is. Now, here is the will of the Lord, that you surrender every thing that has a tongue and everything that has a name. That's the will of the Lord. You can find out what the will of the Lord is by looking into Philippians chapter 2 because it is there that God said that everything that had a name and a tongue was brought to bear and bow before the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we can know what the will of the Lord is and that is total and complete surrender. Now, before you make any move under any conditions, you must ascertain what the will of the Lord is. And if you've not brought everything into surrender to Jesus Christ in His Lordship, then you can never be operating in the true will of the Lord. Because you've not surrendered yourself, you've not surrendered your mind, you've not surrendered your circumstances, you've not surrendered your situation, you have not surrendered to the Lordship. You've not brought whatever you are seeking the will of God about to be laid before Him and made to bow just as you are bowing yourself. So it's easy now to determine your own will. It's easy to determine your own way. It's always easy to do what is able to be done easily and quickly without any uh, real consideration of whether I have laid this at the feet of Jesus and I've laid it at the feet of His Lordship, not at the cross, not at the cross, but at the feet of His Lordship. Because there I bring all of the things that trouble me, all of the things that seem to buffet me, all of the things that seem to bother me, I bring them to His Lordship. When we bring ourselves to the cross, we're bringing our sin. And we're laying our sin there and finding forgiveness and healing. Now, when we come to His Lordship, we're coming in under a different scenario. There we are laying all of the circumstances, situations, all of our family, all of our job issues, all of our church issues. We're laying them at the feet of His Lordship. Why? Because in His Lordship, He has been given the authority and the power over everything that has a name. So we will never know what the will of God is for our life until we bring ourselves and everything in our world that has a name and lay them at the feet of Jesus. The decisions that we make outside of that are not always operating under the will of God. They're operating under our intellect. They're operating under our personal desires, they're operating from those who we have sought advice from concerning the situation. But thank God, the Lordship of Jesus Christ does not require us to go through our own intellect, does not require us to go to another man, does not require us to seek help from another no, the Lordship of Jesus Christ brings us directly into the place where we bow and where the five stages that were given to us as we use His name to control our environment can be brought into complete focus. You remember those, that demons would... Uh, be cast down, that we would speak with new tongues, nothing outside us or inside us would hurt us, everything we laid hands on would recover, and that He as Lord would confirm His Word with signs that follow. Hi, Linda. And so as we bring everything under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that is far different than us bringing our sin to Him. Because in order to do that, we have to cross over from the earthy into the spiritual, according to Paul's writing in Colossians chapter 3. The problem is here that unless you obtain the will of God and the will of the Lordship of Jesus Christ on the issues, what you are doing is you are opening the door 
to the evil day of which Paul says that we live in and that we're engaged. So we must remain firmly attached to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and it is through that that we will also remain attached to the peace. Now if you find people that are not living in any peace, then you're going to know that they're not living in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You're going to know that they are living in the fleshy world. If you find people and you see them constantly living without peace, then you know that they have not come into the place in the Lordship of Jesus Christ that allows them to roll every care on Him for He cares for you. And what's happening, according to Paul, they're not redeeming the time. They're living more towards the evil than they are towards the wise man who, according to Paul, uh, is understanding what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord, Pastor Mike? It's for you to bow before Him, surrender yourself to Him, roll every care on Him, and let Him be Lord. He is the exalted Lord of glory over heaven, earth, and hell. He has defeated everything in your behalf. Half. If you'll put him in place as Lord, he will change your situation. He will solve your lack of peace. He will bring you into a place where you can know that you know that you know that the one who has defeated death, hell, and the grave is operating on your behalf. That is, my friend, the will of the Lord Jesus. Now consider... When you seek to live from your own intellect, what the differences are there, how your own intellect can lead you, what's it going to lead you through, Pastor? Well, it's going to lead you into your own soulish realm. It's going to lead you into how you feel. It's going to lead you into uh, uh, what your emotions are telling you. It's going to lead you into things that become uh, ways that you become personally satisfied. It'll lead you into ways that will allow you to uh, hide and run away from the circumstances of life. It'll, your own intellect is going to lead you into the easiest possible decision that you can do. Do these reflect the will of God? Or do they reflect your own desires? That is the risk that sometimes becomes a very unwarranted risk that Christians take because they refuse to understand how to operate in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If I make Him Lord over everything and I surrender everything to Him, then I can say, I can be in health and prosper even as my soul prospers. I can say I can roll every care on Him for He cares for me. I can know that I can draw near unto Him because He's drawing near unto me. So what is this idea of risk? Well... Risk always has consequences. Risk always has repercussion. Now, if you fall into the good side of the risk and everything works out well, then you reap the benefit of that risk. But if you fall into those unwarranted risks and all of a sudden you do not succeed and what you have chosen to do uh, uh, does not go your way, well, there then becomes consequences and repercussions of those risks. Now, if those risks are taken without respect to the will of God, or the Word of God, or the will of our Lord, who has brought everything under His dominion, and His power, and His authority, then where are the repercussions going to land you? What's going to happen when those unwarranted risks fail? Well, there are many things that could happen. There could come emotional distress, anxiety, discouragement, disgruntlement, downheartedness. There are many, many effects. There could come things in the body. You know, the, we, we could talk about unwanted pregnancy. We could talk about one drink leading to addiction. We could talk about marrying and that marriage leading to, to abuse. We could talk about so many things that happen to people due 
to unwarranted risks because they don't live under the lordship of Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor, does this happen to, to uh, preachers or, or, or Christians? It happens to everybody, friend, whenever we take unwarranted risks outside of the framework of his lordship. The days, my friend, are evil. Don't ever forget that. The devil, like a roaring lion, is trying his best to seek out whom he may devour. Who's willing to walk outside of the lordship of Jesus Christ? Now, notice that I'm not talking about those that are unwilling to walk outside the cross. Those that are unwilling to walk outside the crucifixion or lack of crucifixion of the flesh. Notice that. Because those that are living in the cross and living outside the tomb and outside of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and outside of His righteousness, they are placing themselves more earthy and more towards not redeeming what God in Christ Jesus has done for you. If you look at what God in Christ Jesus has redone for you and you redeem that moment, then you're going to be crucified with Him. You're going to crucify the flesh. You're going to be delivered and seek those things which are above. You're going to come into the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You're going to come into the priesthood. You're going to come into His Lordship. All of those things are going like dominoes and they're going to begin to fall for you if you redeem the work of Jesus Christ. If you do not redeem that work, then you remain on the side where the unredeemed work of Jesus Christ leaves you in the state of the day of evil. Now within the state of that day of evil becomes your battle with not being wise enough to follow the process of Jesus Christ. And now you are left to battle. You are left in a state where you are having to try to battle the unregenerate, the evil moment. My friend, you don't have to be there. You don't have to live in discouragement, disgruntlement, anxiety, oppression, depression, and all of those other things. You do not have to live there. You can live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Paul has just told you in Ephesians 5.17, he said, don't be unwise. Come into the will of the Lord. What is the will of the Lord? It is the place where every knee bows. It is the place where everything that has a name confesses. It is the place where everything that has a tongue speaks the Lordship of Jesus Christ over everything. So my, my lungs are bothering me. All right, speak Come into His Lordship. Lay those lungs on His Lordship. My heart's bothering me. Lay that heart. My eyes are bothering me. Lay those eyes. My ears are bothering me. Lay those. My head is bothering me. Lay. My body's bothering me. Lay that body on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that the enemy in this evil day is coming against you personally with, you have the opportunity to lay it on the Lordship of Jesus Christ when you do. You have the ability to now use His name and cause Mark 16's five elements of the authority of the Lordship of Jesus Christ to begin to manifest for you. That's what we're talking about, friend. That's what Paul is saying, know the will of the Lord. So here we are, living in an evil day, but yet we have the power of the Lordship of Jesus Christ and His will. Now, without, if we are not seeking the will of the Lord, and we're not seeking the blessing of His Lordship, my friend, that is the epitome of being unwise. If we're operating off of how we feel, what we think, what our opinions are, what we're being advised to do, that's the epitome of being unwise. Jesus Christ has given you all of the answers of which you need from His Lordship. Someone said, well, Pastor, I prayed about this thing that is bothering me, and I sought the will of God. 
And I believe that I'm in his will with my decision. Well, great. That's great to know. Now, where is your biblical confirmation? Where is your biblical... You say, what? Where can you see where the response that has been given to your life situation has been handled in Scripture in the way in which you are convinced that the Lord has led you to pursue. You know, I hear people say all the time, I believe this is the will of God that I marry this man. I believe this is the will of God that I take this job. I prayed about this, and I believe I've heard from God that I should do thus and so. Where is your biblical confirmation that what you are doing is the will of God and the place that you should pursue. You know where the problem is? Is that we pray about those things and we pray about them to consume them on our own lust. But we never surrender ourselves to the Lordship, to the will of the Lord. So, God is not going to operate outside of your bowing and you're surrendering yourself to Him. He's not going to do it. God is not, neither going to operate outside of His Word. Mark 16 tells us that, that when they begin to e e execute the five things that He said that His name would do because of His dominion and Lordship, remember those? Cast out devils, speak with new tongues, nothing outside me or inside me would hurt me. I'd lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And the Bible said He sat down at the right hand of God and there He, be he began to confirm the Word. The Lord began to confirm the Word. With what? Signs following. So in your choices, you should always be able to confirm the Word Confirm the word with signs that follow. The leading of the Lord is how they're confirmed through the word and through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now, so where do we go first to find out a guiding principle concerning the will of the Lord that can be directed into our particular situations? Colossians chapter 3 and 16 and 17 would be a great place to start. Here's what he said. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ. Who is Christ? He is the victoriously anointed one who was delivered from the grave, created in God as the righteous standard by which he met Every standard of righteousness that is in his in the Godhead. And then died for us and made us to be equally righteous in him. That's who we're talking about here. That Christ that has brought us into righteousness. And from that anointing comes our wisdom. Now watch what he said. He said teaching and admonishing. Well, what are we teaching about Christ? We're teaching His Word. We're teaching His revelation. We're teaching His grace. We're teaching His balance of truth. So here we are now. And Paul says, Paul says to the Colossians and us, Let the anointed one dwell in you richly. In every bit of wisdom. And let that wisdom be taught to you and admonish you so that you come to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, songs, singing with grace in your heart. Now watch it now. Watch this. To the Lord. Why would this come now to the Lord? Because He is the one to whom we bow. He is the one to whom we surrender. He is the one from whom we learn. He is the exalted Jesus who has dominion over heaven, hell, and earth. He is the one who has dominion in all three worlds. He took back what Adam and Eve gave away.
So now we have in his anointing a wisdom, a teaching, and an admonishing that comes directly from him. Directly from him. Now how can it come directly from him if we don't surrender ourselves to him? If we think that our intellect has a better idea. If we find an easy self-solution. How can we ever come into the grace that is in our inner man from his lordship? This is of critical understanding, friends, because we often hear people say, I'm praying about that. I'm going to pray about that. What are you praying? What are you asking God? And from what position are you asking God? Huh? Pastor, what do you mean? What position are you talking about? Well, if you have never crossed over into the priesthood and you have never been elected, sealed, and adopted, you've never gone into the priesthood, then you have never come into the lordship, from what position are you praying? Look at the scripture. Let the word of Christ, who was he? He was the one that was delivered. He was the one by whom his deliverance brought you to be saved and then into the righteousness of God, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. Then he says, let that righteous Christ dwell in you richly. What's that going to mean, Pastor? That righteousness is how I'm going to cross over into the spirit world, how I'm going to allow the image of him who created me to operate out of me. Now, now, now. I'm going to operate in that image with wisdom. I'm going to operate in that image with teaching. I'm going to operate in that image with an admonishing and encouraging of one another. I'm going to operate in the Word of God in Psalms. I'm going to operate in the singing of the Word of God. I'm going to operate in spiritual songs, speaking and singing in the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to operate now in my, from my inner man. Because it's from my inner man that the Lord is going to show me His will. From my inner man, not from the intellect, not from external advice, not from anyone around me having conversation and saying anything that amounts to anything. No, 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 my friend. I'm going to go into my inner man. I'm going to live out of my inner man. I'm going to listen to the Lord. Now, if he is Lord with dominion over everything, and he has said that in, in his dominion, he is going to confirm his word with signs and wonders that are going to follow his dominion. Don't you know that he is more than capable to speak to you and to lead you and guide you into all truth? Colossians 3.16, then he says in 17, he said now, once you have come under my anointing, once you have come under my righteousness, once you have come under my lordship, once you have been taught and encouraged, once you have come there and you understand there is a vital and vast difference between living earthy and living spiritually, because earthy is associated with darkness and spirituality is associated with the lordship of Jesus Christ. This is where we are, friends. Now watch what he says. When you come in to the grace that is applied in your heart, that opens you up to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, where you will know the will of God, he says, now then whatsoever. Now then. Now that you're living in Lordship. Now that you're not after your intellect. You're not after how you feel. You're not after what you think. You're not after your own opinion. You're not after your own uh, questions. You're not after your own biblical doctrine. No, 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 no. You've laid it all at the feet of Jesus. And you've said, now Jesus, your Lord. And Paul says, whenever he becomes the surrendered Lord with dominion over your life, this is what he said. And whatsoever now you do, Whatever you do from here, where is here, Pastor? 
Here is from the Lordship of Jesus Christ. From bowing yourself and surrendering yourself to Him. Exalting Him, loving Him, caring for Him, and absolutely making Him everything, all and all. Now He said, whatever you do in a word or a deed, if you will continue to do it all under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and you will do it hearing the grace of His Lordship in your heart and in your life, and you will operate from there as the place of launch or the first generation of revelation from His Lordship. If you will come to there and let the will of God be spoken to you from His Lordship, now what would that mean? That would mean I would have to draw nigh unto him and him unto me. I would have to cast every care on him because he cares for me. I would have to live from the abundance of a heart that is speaking forward and forth the word of God. I would have to have my mind transformed into the mind of Christ. I would have to not be conformed to the actions or the ways of this world, but I would have to be transformed, you see. I would have to be living under the headship and lordship. I would have to become a citizen of a new kingdom. I would have to be living under the kingdom rule of Jesus Christ. Now then, he says, now whatever word or deed you do or speak from there, you are speaking it under the lordship of Jesus Christ. So what you need to do from there, my friend, is give thanks to God and give thanks to the Father by him. Now, why would he say that? Well, he's talking about giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So by him is Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Why would he talk about giving thanks to God? Well, because he is a member of the Godhead bodily. Why would he talk about giving thanks to the Father? Because now your word or deed that comes through his lordship according to John 14, is brought through prayer. What happens when you pray in His name? He said, when you pray in My name and from My Lordship, then I will pray the Father for you. It is only from here. Now watch this closely. It is only from here, from that place, where Jesus Christ is Lord that He picks up your prayer and, the, and, and prays the Father for you. Now then, there is no question of an answer. There is no question of a direction. There is no question of whether your prayer is going to be brought out of the heavenly domain. Why? Because you prayed it appropriately. You came through the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you came to the, to the throne room of God. You prayed according to what Jesus taught us in John 14. He said, if you pray the Father in my name, I will pray for you. Now we can come to the full disclosure of the will of God. But if we are not praying according to the plan of God in Christ Jesus, through the Father through the Lordship, then my friend, we're not hearing the actual message of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's very simple. Let me show you how you do it. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I know that I have access to you because that name has dominion and you have exalted it above every name that is named. So I come today through that exalted name. I bring to you today this need and this request. I have a need in my body. I have a need in my mind. I have a need in my home. Whatever it is, you plug it in right there. I have a need right here. I have come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And this is my need. Now right there, Jesus said, I will pick up your prayer. And when I pick up your prayer, I pick up your prayer from the perspective of being Lord over everything. I'm Lord over everything. I have dominion over everything. 
So there's nothing that has a tongue or a name or a knee that cannot be brought to bow. And Jesus Christ in His Lordship begins to mediate the new covenant on your behalf. What's in the new covenant, Pastor? Everything that the blood has been given by Jesus Christ to be a benefit to you. Every promise that is yea and amen in Him. All in the new covenant of which Jesus Christ mediates. He picks up your prayer right there. And now the Lord, the will of the Lord becomes available to you. Now you will know exactly when God begins to heal you. When God begins to heal you. I have a shoulder that sometimes wants to get nasty. You know what I say with it? In the name of Jesus, He is Lord over you. And Jesus picks up my prayer and the blood from His back that was shed for my healing goes into place. Does the devil come back at times and create a pain? Yeah, and I tell him the same thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on this in the name of Jesus. And Jesus picks up my prayer and there is no pain. I got castigated for that one time. I'm trying to tell you how healing works. It'll work for you. It'll work for me. It'll work at the laundromat. What we have to do is understand the teaching about how to get into the place where every word and every deed is brought under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Then we'll know the will of the Lord. Father, I pray that you'll move and minister. Open our eyes that we may see. We will give you praise and honor and glory for every bit of it in the lovely name of Jesus Christ, who is our high priest, our Lord, and our man in the Godhead. Amen and amen. I, I know there are men more on here that didn't sign in. I see Linda and I see Tammy. My friends, if you will hear the word of the Lord, Verily, verily, I say unto you that the plan of salvation has been given to bring you out of darkness into life. Out of darkness into light. The plan of the Lord is that you walk confirming His word, His power, and His dominion over you. That if you will learn to come into the spirit world and access Him as Lord, he will pick up your prayer and He will reveal to you the meeting of your need because that need being met is the will of the exalted Jesus Christ to whom every knee, every tongue, every mouth, every name bows. Find Him there, my friend. And you'll be able to pronounce the name of Jesus to the Father and activate Him as Lord in your life and be healed and be well and be delivered, brought out of poverty, brought out of brokenness, brought out of bruising, brought out of being blind, brought out of captivity and placed in liberty. I say that to you as the Spirit gives the utterance. May God bless you is my prayer until we talk again. God bless you, podcasters. Find him as Jesus, and you'll find him as the one who will reveal his lordship to you. Find him as the man in the Godhead bodily, and he'll show you great and mighty things that are to come. May God bless you until we speak again.